Hi everybody, thank you for joining me again on my channel. Today we're going to kind of do a little bit of a live um, video, but it, I don't think it'll be too long. I've had a couple people ask to on my travel album to explain how I select pictures. So right now, like I said, I'm going in and trying to fill in the blanks because I don't scrapbook chronologically. So I've been working on one section of the book and trying to do um, as many of my 12 by 12 album layouts as I can that of the pictures I like that represent an event that we did on our trip. So right now I'm to the point where I think I have that event pretty much scrapped. But as you can see, I still have quite a few pictures still in my envelope. So what I'm going to do is go through and just kind of check the pictures to see do I have it already represented? Is it something that I need to keep or is it something I can pitch? And do I need a full layout for it or is it something that can just go on a Project Life page? Or um, like a grid layout where I can get multiple photos on. So I'm just going to take you on that kind of path. So the first thing I'd like to do, um, I'm going to throw down some blank paper just because I don't want you guys to have to look at any glare. But I wanted to show you my album along with it. So give me one second here. Okay, I got this piece of paper and I'll grab one more. piece of brown paper okay so that way you won't clear so the first thing I do when I have the the envelope um, usually when I put them in the envelope they're in some kind of an order but as I scrapbook and go through they kind of get shuffled around so they're not necessarily in order so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look and kind of categorize the pictures within the event so like this is a picture of the tunnels that you drive through to go and when you're on, oh, I should go back and say, these are on the Iron Mountain or I believe some people call it the Needle Road. And basically what it is, it's a winding road that goes up or down the mountainside and there's tunnels carved out of the mountain. But the cool thing is, is they did it in a way that it actually frames Mount Rushmore so as you're going through the tunnel you're seeing Mount Rushmore so this is as you're going in and they're the width of them are only one car width wide so you have to honk your horn to make sure that no one else is in the lane before you start entering so you have to come to a complete stop honk your horn look and then go so I have pictures of the entranceway I have pictures of looking through the entranceway and then I have just pictures of Mount Rushmore. I have pictures of the road that's winding and more of the winding and I mean you can see that like, they give you the U-turn. I mean you do a complete U-turn in the road when you're going through. Um, here's another picture of driving on the road. There's this picture of the woods, more of the road. Um, there's pine trees, but Mount Rushmore is in the background, so I'll go ahead and put that with Mount Rushmore. This is just trees. You can't see Mount Rushmore or anything. Here is the tunnel. Here is again the tunnel, Mount Rushmore. Then there is this vantage point that you look at. It was like a rest area, the uh, overlook. So that's a different category within it. Here's more Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore. I think somewhere in here was an animal. I think there was a bunch of turkeys, but you can't really see them. So I'm gonna put this in just wildlife. Here is the entrance of the overlook. And again, the overlook, uh, the overlook. The sign for going onto the Overlook, which is Norbeck, Norbeck Overlook. Another picture of the sign and another Mount Rushmore. 
So now I kind of have them categorized into piles so I can tell what I still have left. So I'm just going to kind of make them like uneven, you know, crisscross stacks just so I can quickly find them again. So now that I've got them kind of sorted, now I'm going to go and look and see what I've already scrapbooked and what still needs to be documented in my book. And then I'll go through and say, okay, I like this picture, don't like this picture, don't need this picture. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put these back. All right. So the first one is my husband and he's looking through the sightseeing and he's looking at Mount Rushmore. That one's all documented. I don't have any extra pictures of that, of him actually looking. Now on this page, I have the Norbeck Black Hills National Forest sign. So right now I can tell I don't need that again. So those two that I have that are of the sign, let me grab them out. There is nothing special about these, <coughs> excuse me, other than I took it from the, the other side. But it still says the exact same thing. I've got everything in this picture. I don't need any more. There's no people in this picture. So there's no reason for me to hang on to these photos. I have them in my hard drive. They're going in the garbage. So that's how I kind of sort. So another photo up here is, again, my husband looking at the overpass. And again, him looking through the, um, what are those, sightseeing, um, I forget what they call those. You know, where you put a dime in or a quarter in and you can look and see far away and then this is the memorial for Norwalk so I don't have any of these photos now I do have the couple that were like the front entrance the sign and I have these of walking up to this lookout area so let me see if I have any of those represented And I don't. So going through and looking at these, my husband's in this one. So I think I'm going to save this one and put it into the um, pocket page. So I'll put that to the side. My husband is walking in this one as he's heading up to the overlook. So again, I think I'll save this and put that in the book. This is just pine trees and really doesn't tell any kind of a story. And again, there's nobody in this one. So this is going to go in the garbage. Again, I have it on my hard drive. And again, this is that overlook. And it's basically the same thing as this one. The only difference is my husband's in the picture. And there's in the background some stranger in this one. So this one's going in the garbage. Okay, so that's the overlook is done. Now, my next group of pictures are Mount Rushmore and the entrance going in. So I have one of the cars going in. I have the where it says, um, sound your horn. I have where the Mount Rushmore, you can tell through, you know, it's framed. I have pictures of Mount Rushmore. I have pictures of the road itself and how it had those wooden road, you know, bridges going over the top of them. And again, a car going through the tunnel. Here's another tunnel. And then here's quite a few of Mount Rushmore. So right off the bat, I can't tell what animal those are. Again, it's just mainly foresty pictures. We all know what pine trees look like. It's not going to add value to my book. There's other pine trees in here. You get the idea of what, um, as Janet with RTS would say, the mood and feel. 
So you can already, with what's in here, get the mood and the feel of the trip, that it's wooded, it's rocky, it's nature. So these three are going in the garbage. Okay, now it's the, the bridge and the driving of the road. This one is, you can see the, um, my, the rear view mirror and you can see my elbow in it, but it's all blurry because it's close up. So I don't think this is a good quality picture. Again, this is just pine trees and you can see Mount Rushmore, but barely there's branches covering it up. So I don't necessarily need this. Um, this one's not bad, but you can see like our um, tollway, the, the Velcro to hold the tollway thing is up top in the rear view mirror. So I'm gonna put this on a maybe. I do like the U-turn, and I don't think I have a U-turn. Let me look. I don't have a U-turn, so we're gonna go ahead and keep the U-turn. This is just mountainside, and it really doesn't add value to the story. Again, another blurry picture of the road, but doesn't really add value. This one's just a, a picture of the road, doesn't add value. Um, here is again doesn't add value so now the other two the only two that I have that I might consider so let's go ahead and pitch these so now I just have these two that were showing us going instead of under the bridge over the bridge and let me see if I have anything like that and I don't so I'm still not sure and I want to try and stick to like the six pictures if possible. I know I'm I'm going to eliminate this one because it's blurry. So I might use this one. So that's going to go on a maybe pile. All right, so here's the ones of going through the tunnel where you don't see Mount Rushmore. I kind of think this one is cool because it does show the full tunnel. However, it's my only vertical photo. Everything else is horizontal. And I'm not sure if I want to go and try and find a special page protector when I know I have six, you know, the um, six pocket ones for vertical. But I'm gonna put it on the maybe just because you never know. These two, really don't add value to it, they're going in the garbage. So now the only other thing, excuse me, I have is Mount Rushmore. So this one is showing going through the tunnel and it shows Mount Rushmore. I have that here. You can't really make out the presidents in this picture. So to me, it doesn't really add value. This one's going in the garbage. Um, this one I like, you can see them, but again, they're not very clear. And I have other photos that I think are more clear that show, but I do like how the trees frame it. So I'm gonna put it to the side for a minute, but it's probably going in the garbage. Um, I thought this one was cool only because it had one of the tourist helicopters going over the top. So that's a maybe. These are really clear. This one, you can't see it. This one's further back and it's a little blurry. This one's, you can't make them out. So this one I know right away is going in the garbage. This one, you can't make them out going in the garbage. And that's garbage. Okay, so now I have these three, and I kind of like it's showing the depth of being farther away, and then some of them are telephotoed. Um, so let me go and see. There's five, 
And if I take the one that's vertical and maybe cut it down to a four by four, right now I have 10 and that could be 10 on each page or five on each page and then a journaling box. So right now I've kind of got it to where I think I can, I can use these 10 for a double sided page protector with the pocket pages. But that's how I go, that's how I go through a full stack and I pick and choose what I need to finish it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, hit uh, the pause. I'm gonna go ahead and put my page together and then when I come back, I'll show you what it looks like and how um, it came together with these 10 photos that I've picked. Now, whether or not I, I use them all, I don't know. And again, one of my questionable ones will be, although I really like the picture, because it really shows the depth of how much they had to cut through the mountain, it just doesn't, even if I try and trim it off at four inches, you lose that. And I don't know if I want to go, like I said, look for a special page protector for one photo. So. Um, that is it for today. Again, um, I'm going to hit stop. I'll come back and I'll add to this video the finished page. So I'll be back right back. Bye. Okay, I'm back and I finished my page. Hopefully you won't get too much of glare, but I did want you to see what it looked like actually in the book. So I'm kind of standing up trying to look. So the section starts way up here. So here's where it begins. And I have all my 12 by 12 layouts, which I showed you earlier. And then this is at the back end. And these were the last two pages that I did. And I usually like sticking these between two 12 by 12s um, so that they don't look out of place. So they're in the middle of the event and they're sandwiched in between. Now, if I get to the point where maybe one event only has one page and not two, then I might change my mind. But for right now, it's easier for me to sandwich them in between. So what I did was I tried to kind of bridge the layout over. So this had a green background. So I went ahead and used a green background for this one space. I used the same camera paper that I had and the same floral. And then I made the tag out of another paper that was in this and then just added some butterflies which I had over here um, some pink flo flowers and so it tied it all together it didn't look like it was um, made after the thought but was made kind of intentional so that's the first side and then the back side again I kind of tried to mimic um, what I had over here in the layout so I did end up cutting down that horizontal picture, um, or I'm sorry, the, the vertical picture. I cut it down and I made it three and um, three quarters by three and three quarters so it would fit on the four, um, four by six card. And then I mimicked the stripes that I had over here, the strips, and I did it here and here. And then I just grabbed an alpha that was in my stash that I haven't been using. And I just wrote out Iron Mountain Road and I didn't even embellish it because it really didn't need it. Once I got all the paper on there, I've got a little bit of embellishment over here, but it ties the whole page together because I'm carrying over the color. I'm coloring, carrying over some of these papers. And again, I want to keep it minimal because I don't want to add bulk to my layout. So that is how I go and I, when I get done with my event, after I've scrapped all the pictures that bring me joy, as Marie Condon would say, then I look at what I have left and find out what still adds value to my album, but I don't necessarily need to have another scrapbook page for it. So I hope this helped you out if you are working on your own travel album. Now, I'm not sure which section I'll be going into yet next. Like I said, I still have a stack of photos like that big of envelopes and I haven't even begun I don't think I printed the Badlands 
so this is still going to be an ongoing project for the month, but I just wanted you to kind of see um, how I fill in the blanks and try and keep the, the album cohesive. And like I had said in my other video, once all the events are done, I may have to maneuver things around within the albums. I know I need to go to a third album. And I like to keep it all chronological, so I will go back and look and see like what dates the pictures were taken and try and keep it in some kind of an order to follow along. Like, here's how we drove down, here's where we stayed, this is what we did the first day. And so it, you'll be able to follow our vacation from beginning to end in order. So I want to thank you all for stopping by. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let others know and YouTube know that you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you as a subscriber. And again, for those who subscribe and leave me comments, I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks for joining me today. You have a great day and stop back in another couple days. We should have another video for you. Thanks. Bye-bye.